Pat Cardinal from the Mohawk Valley chapter of Certified Football Officials. And also it says here in my notes, a dentist here on National Smile Day. Uh, come closer to the microphone, Pat, and say hello. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. Good. good. Uh, a dentist and a referee yes, at the same time. Yeah. Masochistic personality. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever been in a game where someone's thrown an elbow, lost a tooth, and you went to the rescue? Uh, absolutely not. No? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so there's a shortage of referees. This is an interesting. There's a story in the Rome Sentinel about this. Why? Well, why is there a shortage of referees these days? Is it just for football or all sports? No, I think it's for all sports, uh, predominantly for football right now. It's true throughout the state. Um, our numbers, uh, four years ago, we had probably 75 officials in our organization. Right now, we're down to about 55. Hmm. Same number of games. Um, we're spread very thin. Uh, some of the schools now have to change the times of their games. Most of the schools want to play Friday nights now, but those are nights when sometimes we don't have enough officials, so they have to change to Saturdays. Mm, and I wonder if this has anything to do with uh, the lack in popularity of football compared to soccer, for instance, or do you find that there are a lack of soccer referees too? Um, there's a lack of soccer referees. I think the problem with football is that there's not as many games to do in football as there is in soccer and basketball. In soccer and basketball, you can pretty much officiate Every, every day. Football, predominantly, our games are on Friday nights, Saturday mornings, JV, Saturday afternoons, Thursdays, but um, the rest of the days, there's, there's no games. How many officials are needed for a high school football game versus the NFL or college? Um, the high school has five for varsity, mm -hmm. four for JV and modified. College has seven. The NFL has seven, mm -hmm. soon to go to eight. Is this trend happening just here locally, or are you seeing this? It's a national what? trend. Yeah? Yeah, it's a national trend. So what do we do to get uh, people more involved in this? Is there a solution? Million-dollar question. Mm. Um, we've tried everything. I mean, right now we've got a great website if anybody wants to go on it. Uh, it's NVCCO. Uh, just Google that. Um, social media. Our best officials come from word of mouth, you know, bringing other people in. It's football. You can't do football for money. You do it for the love of the game because the amount of time that we commit to it, um, you, you'd make less than minimum wage. And what does it take to become a referee? Certification, any kind yeah, of Yeah, we, we start out with classes um, the last two weeks in July. Um, a prospective official would come to four classes. Then there's an exam, and if he passes the exam, he becomes what we call a probate. He serves as a probate for three years. He's rated, and once he, he uh, obtains a certain level of proficiency, he becomes an active official. Yeah. Are you guys seeing the situations where you're running into uh, the lack of officials not being able to participate in these games and the games um, don't take place? Um, yes, actually, that's true. Hmm. Syracuse also. Um, sometimes we just don't have enough guys, hmm. and we'll ask the schools to change into a different date. Would you go with fewer officials? You mentioned the number no. that has to be added. Is that some sort of rule? No. That a actually, um, no, because we went from four officials on a varsity game about 12 years ago to five. And the game has evolved to the point now where the offenses are, are they're complicated. They spread us way out. Mm -hmm. And we can't do a high school game with four guys. It's, sometimes it's hard to do it with five guys. Some states are going to six, six officials on a high school game. And are, and are the rules accredited or somewhat on a national level? Do you guys follow guidelines? Yeah. Yeah. We're part of what they call the National Federation. There's 48 states in the, in the Federation. We all play by the same rules. Massachusetts and Texas have their own rules. Hmm. I saw an, uh, an incident last weekend where uh, I think it was a college official attempted to take a swing at a coach on the sidelines down in, I think it was Louisiana or something like that. Do you ever get to that point where you have to restrain yourself? And how important is that as a referee to maintain an even keel temperament when things like that happen in a game? That's the most important part mm -hmm. of being an official not losing your head while everyone is losing theirs around you. Mm -hmm. um, to be a good official, I mean, you have to have tremendous focus. On, on your task, number one. Number two, you have to be able to block out everything that's going on. I mean, there could be five, 6,000 people that are screaming at you, and you need to, to concentrate on that one task that's going on. So in answer to your question, um, you know, as far as coaches go, I've never had that issue. Talking to Pat Cardinal, Mohawk Valley Chapter of Certified Football Officials. Uh, you can ask questions if you like, 624-0870. He's also a dentist on National Smile Day today here on the Talk of the Town at 100.7 FM WUTQ. And, Pat, you mentioned you've been uh, officiating football for 35 years. You've uh, also done basketball 12 years there. And you mentioned uh, off the air to us that you stopped that because of bad knees. So it's not, it's not just the athletes that, uh, that go through some of the, the physical wear and tear. It's also the referees sure. as well. Sure, and that's probably the biggest reason why guys get out is they get 
add a new year. So, I mean, there's a, there's a huge physical, you know, it, it, it beats you up sometimes, especially now because we're so short officials. Mm-hmm. I mean, some of us are doing four or five games a week. And our, our board has gotten old. I mean, as the young guys have come in, we haven't been able to retain them. You know, mm-hmm. we'll have 10 in a class, and we're lucky if three years later we still have five or six left. And sometimes, maybe you know, we don't really uh, take into a, a con- con- or appreciation or the concern that you're, you're running up and down the court the whole game. You know, you don't have uh, other referees coming in to sub for you off the bench or whatnot. So. And that is, that is so true. So you're involved in the whole game. Another question I had here, I see the discrepancy between, you know, like a Pop Warner game and a varsity game. Are you, are you seeing, besides the commitment that uh, some of the guys are, are trying to buy for the, the, the games where they're going to get a little bit more money, um, and then the Pop Warner games, maybe they're left uh, aside, and some of the officials aren't signing up for... Uh... Um, actually, I'm what they call the assigner. Okay. I, I assign people to games. So okay? it's, they don't have so a choice. So you don't really have much of a choice, mm-hmm. unless you have a family commitment. Um, you know, you're given a schedule, and you're expected to show up for those games, regardless if it's Pop Warner modify JV or varsity. Hmm. It's interesting you have that job as an assigner. Uh, I know Matt Palin pretty well. I don't know if you know Matty, a lacrosse uh, goalie turned referee from Syracuse University, also refs college basketball and football games. And he has some sort of uh, business now where he schedules referees nationwide. They use him as a clearinghouse. I don't know if you're aware of that yeah, or not. Well, in college, a lot, a lot of the larger conferences are doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, the local high school associations like ours, there's usually an elected official who serves for three-year terms, and he does all the assigning, which is a tough job. I because bet. There's, there, there's multiple personalities. Schools can block 10% of our board if they don't want them to come. Certain officials can't go to certain schools if they have a wife that teaches there, a brother. So it's we're juggling all the time. Yeah, so not besides the officiating and the time that's taken away from there, uh, the scheduling, and then I'm sure you have a, a day job as a dentist, too. So yes. it's, it is the time consuming. It's a busy time of Did year. you see the video of the ref who was blindsided in a I tackle? Did, what, was your, what was your opinion of that? Uh, my opinion was, it was for me, it was sickening to watch mm-hmm. that. Um, I mean, I don't think there's, there's any excuse for that. The two players said their coach told them to do it. That's no excuse to mm-hmm. do it. Have you seen an increase over your, you know, your 35 years of doing this of maybe some more parent involvement on the negative side? That's a huge problem. Yeah. That really is a huge problem. I mean, we've had brawls at games. A couple of years ago, there was a big brawl in a Syracuse game during a sectional game with parents <laughs> being involved. <laughs> yeah. Well, I've seen it, too, in all sorts of sports. It's pervasive from Little League all the way on up. And, and this is one of the reasons why it's sometimes hard to retain officials. You know, they go to some games and they just get chewed on by the fans, you know, by the coaches. And after doing a few games, they'll say, this, this isn't for me. You know, this is supposed to be fun. And they just, they just they can't take the stress of, of being yelled at. You, you can't have what we call rabbit ears. You can't hear everything that's right. going on in the sidelines. Yes. And if you have rabbit ears, um, you're not going to make it an officiating. All right, for those who are listening in who have kids or maybe uh, young men or women who are interested in this kind of thing, what is the compensation and how do you suggest they get involved? Um, the best way to get involved is, is, to, is to come to the classes. The classes are the last two weeks in July. We always have something in the, in the paper. There is our website that you can go to. Compensation varies according to the level that you're officiating. Mm-hmm. Pop Warner is $47 per game. You can do two or three games on a Saturday or a Sunday afternoon. Um, modified is fifty four fifty. JV is sixty four. Varsity is eighty five. And how long would it take for someone who's interested in this? Is you know what that sounds pretty good. How long would it take for them to get to the point where they could actually officiate these games if they had no experience at this point? Oh, our first year, our first year officials are doing Pop Warner, Modified, and JV. Mm-hmm. You know, once you pass the exam. Um, you know, you're set to go. And how long you does know, that take? And is there a cost to the exam? I'm sorry. Yeah, it's a it's a it's a twenty five dollar fee for the classes mm-hmm. in the exam. And um, I taught the classes for twenty five years, and I don't think we had more than one or two people that ever failed the exam. Mm-hmm. Very good. And uh, yeah, Pat, and uh, the website again, if you want to uh, let folks know. For the Mohawk Valley Chapter of Certified Football Officials, is the group. Uh, what is the website that they go to? It's NVCCFO. And just Google that. I think it's .org. And uh, these folks are really contingent on, uh, you know, us being able to get out there and play the sports, our children, yeah. our family. Uh, vital, vital people in the sports community. Pat, thanks for coming in. Best of luck in the future. Okay. And uh, bring your whistle in next time if you want. Thanks for having me. I appreciate it.